As you know, I come from a different generation, and I understand that, so sometimes as I refer to something, I refer to something in my past, and for some of you, you might remember, and some not. A number of years ago, there was a television program that really was a precursor to what I call today's reality shows. And it was called Candid Camera. And it was an interesting show. Alan Funt was the one who was the creator of it. And what would happen is, is that a situation would be set up. It was either some sort of work situation or a test situation, a whole gambit. And it, Candid Camera, what happened was the person was completely unsuspecting. And usually there would be a glitch, something would go wrong, or they'd have to do something. And the humor would take place. And finally, after about a few minutes of all of this, out would come Alan Funt and say, smile, you're on candid camera. And you could see the bemused look on people's face as they went through that. Oh, they were really usually pretty good natured about the whole thing. They were unsuspecting that that camera was there and they were they were focused upon, smile, you're on candid camera. Completely unexpected. Back in 1971, when I was 16 going on 17 years old, if you can remember that long back or see me back then, I went to the mailbox to get my parents' mail. I pulled out an envelope and it was from the New York State Music Association opened it up, and to my great surprise, without even thinking about it, or even considering it, it said, you have been invited to the New York State Music Association Choir at the, at the Concord Hotel in Kayamisha Lake in the, in the Catskills. This was the big event for the New York State Music Association at the time. When, again, as I date myself a little bit, back in New York, the Catskills were really a thing. Well, I didn't know what to think. I had only been in choir for one year. I had done a solo for uh, the competition. Solo went well. However, I wasn't quite perfected in my sight reading at that point and to ask the question, how unperfected was I when I was starting to do my sight reading, my choir director who took me hid in the other part of the room. <laughs> that was totally unexpected. I called the choir director up and said, Mr. McHugh, I said, this is, he goes, oh, it's just the local. Then when I told him, he said, this is the statewide one, and he just was quiet at the other end. So I went, but it was completely unexpected. Who knew? With the idea of unexpected and surprised, I want you to think about those two things and travel with me back in time to a nothing village called Nazareth. This was not a village that was well known. Now today we talk about it, talk about Nazareth. But back then, Nazareth was about as meaningful as any small small one light town you could ever think of in less than that. And the girl who they go to is not anybody special. She is just a daughter of a family and she is doing exactly what she's supposed to do in getting married to Joseph. In fact, it's getting very close. She is betrothed to him, which in that particular culture meant everything. You were almost considered marriage except for the marriage bed. Serious time. And how old was she at that time? And it's hard for us to even consider this or think about it because we have 2,000 years in the story. That scholars think she's between 14 and 16 years old. So here is someone probably just working in the house a little bit or sitting down, whatever she's doing, and all of a sudden an angel shows up. And this angel, as she is in her tradition, knows that the angel showing up, Gabriel, is, a, is kind of a connection with the Old Testament. 
one wonders, here is this everyday girl by the name of Mary who you probably wouldn't know from anybody else in the village of Nazareth, and there is an angel saying, greetings, favored one. I almost wonder at the time when the angel said that, Mary went like this. <laughs> he gives that greeting to her and gives her the news that we hear at this time every year. 2,000 years passed in the Christmas story. It is all a little bit far away, but can you imagine this girl who is of an everyday household being called on by God to carry God's son? And interestingly enough, Mary's response is very, very mature. It's really interesting how she responds. How is this to be? The angel gives her, the, gives her all how this is going to take place. And Mary's response is very simple and plain. But in those simple and plain words are the most meaningful words and indeed putting motion the plan of God in Jesus. Be it done to me according to your will. I am the Lord's servant. Whatever you want, God. We look at this and we hear this every but think about what that meant to her. Think what it would mean to her in her society. Think about in the long haul what it would mean. And she indeed understands it, but she is willing to do what God wants. We think of the miraculous piece of that, but can you imagine how the weeks must have been afterwards? We know Joseph was just about ready to divorce her, except for an angel coming in. That she eventually would probably become the talk of the town, and not in a very good way, I'm afraid. But she followed through whatever God wants. Now, Fast forward 2,000 years, and we know that as she begins with God's plan, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus this evening, we see how God unfolds, but he unfolds in a very simple, ordinary person who's just willing to do what God wants. And we know for Mary, in doing that, we'll sing about the birth of Jesus, we'll sing about the wonder, the angels, but we know the rest of the story, don't we? That for Mary, she also had to watch her son be rejected and crucified. That in this place, there is also the challenges, but Mary is faithful. She understands. And we see in John's Gospel, perhaps her last reported words, almost mirror what she says at the time when the angel comes. Do whatever he tells you. She's willing to trust God even in those circumstances as well. And therein, friends, lies the challenge for our lives, our relationship to God. You know, one of the greatest things in life is, and I think it happens to all of us in different ways and in different places, when God puts before us a task to do. Now, it doesn't have to necessarily be a religious task. It can be a family task. It can be all sorts of tasks. But a God ta task put before us, and we feel God's presence. We are, get excited, and we're ready to go. And, well, we say with Mary, whatever you want, Lord. Whatever you want me to do, Lord. And God does do it. But here's the challenge for us, friends that when we do what God wants us to do, we need to accept the fact that along the way, the challenges will be there as well. Any task that God calls us to do, and it's in every different kind of thing in life, we need to keep our eyes wide open and to continue that trust in God. And if we falter along the way, God understands, but we need to see that when God calls us to something, we need to hang in there and trust God. Now, it's not easy. I've told you the story before of my time 
when I had the call to ministry, and I can tell you all the different ways that God confirmed it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but when I got to seminary, the greatest complainer and worrier was not, was not anybody else but me. I've tried to mature a little bit since then, but circumstances do come up, don't they, in our lives? One way or another, as we follow God, they come up unexpectedly. But Mary shows us that if we just hang in there with God, and it's not easy. It's not easy to hang in to what we feel called to do in life whether it's an occupation, whether it's... You can bake the list. You have to be ready for the fact that along with the glory will always come the challenge. And for all of us, as best as we are able, because God knows us, he supports us. Friends, we can follow God, we can feel the presence of God and that's a wonderful thing. But along the way, let us think about Mary. Let us think about, in fact, everyone involved in this Christmas story, that they were willing to follow through with God and trust God as we celebrate Jesus' birth tonight. May it be for us, as best as we are able, and as God loves each one of us, that we can say along with Mary, behold, whatever God wants. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord, we thank you for the wonderful story of Christmas, how you work through such ordinary people with extra, who have extraordinary faith that I'm sure they didn't even think they had, but they followed through, and we will celebrate the birth of Jesus Lord, in our own lives, there are various places where you call us and nudge us. As our brother Martin Luther reminds us, it's in every area of life or in new challenges, new horizons, new jobs. And yes, Lord, even as we follow you and serve you in your, in your house, in the church, there are those moments, and we know they're there, and they're exciting moments. Lord, help us to follow through and help us to trust you. For as Mary trusted, we know the rest of the story. As Joseph trusted, we know the rest of the story. And as even Jesus himself trusted, we know the rest of the story. Thank you, Lord, that when we do what you say, the best we are able, that you do far more above than we ask or can think and support us along the way. Thank you, Lord. Amen.